Hey there, this is Elizabeth Anglin talking to you on Spreaker. Can anybody hear me out there in Spreaker land in the chat room? You guys may be, it might be taking them some time to come back. Um, say something, my friend. Yeah, I do not have you coming in. Um, hold on. Yeah, call, no, it's the cable, it's the cable output situation. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, well, virtual, I want virtual enemy. And yeah, call me back because i got to redo my speaker configurations. Okay, cool. Ah, hi Spear, this is Elizabeth England. Welcome to Spaced Out Radio Weekend, where we are dealing with our continuing poltergeist of online radio. Yes, the poltergeist of online radio. Imagine that. Poltergeists are everywhere. Our poltergeist likes to cause us echoes and then to make our guests go away. Hmm. I think we need to have a really, really, really good smudging. That's what I think. Okay, so I'm going into Spreaker now. And I'm going to do some audio setting magic so I can have Mr. James Tyson on uh, the show. Um, I hope this will not take me off. Okay. I'm saving that. Let's see. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to call him now. Um, ooh, that does not look good. James. Hello, you've reached the voicemail here for Spaced Out Weekend, and I'm James Tyson. If you've got a message for me, just leave it after the beep. If you're looking for James. Joanna, the medium, she's not here. She does not take messages here. James. You can look her up at joannathemedium.com and get a hold of her through her website. If you're looking to find out when Joanna and Paisley are doing James. two mediums in a large, that's every second Sunday. Mm -hmm. You can find the schedule at spacedoutradio.com. And again, when she does a reading on... James. Howdy. Can you hear me? Or not. I cannot hear you for anything. Hello? James? <laughs> you heard James with... Thank you. I can't. Well, at least you can hear that. I can't hear a thing. Can't hear a sweet thing. Can you hear me? James, are you there? Because I can't hear you. Huh. William, can you hear me? Okay. So you thought you could hear both. Ah. Oh, you can't can hear, you hear me? me? Here, can you hear I'm me? here. Oh, sorry, Elizabeth, can you hear me? James Tyson, are you there? Oh, James Tyson. Oh, this is like a, can it hear a good 45-second delay. Okay, William can hear us both, but I cannot hear James, so we cannot have a conversation. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. James Tyson. No. James Tyson.
I can hear anything. James, are you there? I can't hear you at all. Yep. Crap is right. James writes crap. I say crap is right. James can talk for a sec. Hey, I can hear somebody doing the drums. Is that you? Oh, it's me typing. Oh, okay. Well, I, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Oh, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure anybody can hear you. Can anybody hear well, James? Is my little, like, meter going on the, uh... It's going, but I don't think that they can hear you. Oh, crap. Drat, I know. Drat, that cat. That's... Pull this car over, young lady. The space cat from space. Oh, there's a crazy echo. A crazy, crazy echo. Is that what, are they saying there's a crazy echo? Spear says, um, you're a bit faint, but you're here. Dominique says there's a crazy echo, and, and William says he can hear us both. Okay, tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to hang up and call in by phone. And then I'm going to get you to call um, David okay. after the break, or during the break. Okay. Okay. Everyone uh, Hang on. get naked. Okay. I have no idea what number to call you at. Stand by. Oh. Fire off your... Uh, 505. Your yeah. Here, here you go. 505-908. Nine five five eight. That's Skype phone. The Skype phone. Yeah. All right. To the Skype phone. To the Skype phone. Okay. Bye. La 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 la. Okay. So how do I sound? If um James is um he's he's gone away. Am I talking down a tunnel still? Is it is it still like that, Dominique and William? Hello, James Tyson. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Let's see if anybody else can hear. And then we're back with Space at Radio Abbott and Costello Hour. Hello. To do. We don't know what we're doing. All right, William says he can hear me. Great. Can you hear James, William? Hello, William. Okay, we are less tunnely. That is much. That is much much better. Less tunnely is good. Less tunnely, less feedback. Yeah. That's good. Okay, James. Here's a question for you. Are we going yep. to try to add Revolution Radio to this call? Uh, oh, what the heck, go ahead. And see what happens? So, if it goes to crap, yeah, we'll, we'll just hang up on him. Yeah, well, uh, we, we're, we've got two minutes to wait for, uh, until the, uh, that, the top of the hour break anyway. That nice, uh, sorry, your, your time and 56. Mm-hmm. Press on that, press play on that, uh, seven minute thingy, and that's the time we're going to be calling. Yeah. You're going to be calling, um, your person. Okay, so basically we have like a minute, folks. If there's anything you'd like to know from either one of us, if you're not still busy getting naked on air, which of course... What? what? I, you told them to get naked. They might have done it. <laughs> Somebody might have done it. No, a oh, Williams says no. Okay, you are not as strong. Okay, Dominique says no. Here, okay, hopefully this will come through. So, James, how's your? How are your settings? Yeah, stand by. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention because I was doing some uh, looking for Dave's number. Oh, okay. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna. Stop. So what's the paranormal update? You 
got? One minute, go! Proxima B. So basically, you know, NASA finally finds this Earth-like planet that's only, oh gosh, four and a half light years away from Earth. It's in the Goldilocks zone. It's an Earth-like planet. Well, what do you know? But there have been people, alien contactees and abductees, who have met people from Proxima B in the Alpha Centauri place, you know, the, the solar system already. One of them is a being that has eight hands and has an intelligence uh, between the dog and a human. Mm -hmm. Eight-handed. Yeah, it's amazing. Eight and I don't think NASA doesn't want you to know, and that's why we're Five having problem seconds. problems. And so Three here, seconds. listen to Bumblefoot because you know Bumblefoot's good. All right, bye. The button is pressed. The button is. Hi there, this is Dave Scott, and I would like to invite you to listen Monday through Friday right here on Spaced Out Radio. Three hours a night of the top stories with the top guests, ranging topics from UFOs to ETs, ghosts to Sasquatch, and everything in between. We are live every night, 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern. So come on in and take a listen at SpacedOutRadio.com. Spaced Out Radio will take you out of this world. Hi there. This is your psychic medium, Joanna, and I would love it if you would join us every other Sunday on Spaced Out Weekend. With host James Tyson, we'll bring you personal psychic messages on two mediums and a large. Questions about love, life, career changes. We would love it if you would come and join us live. Call in and listen in for the experience. Allow us to open the doors to your other side. Two mediums and a large. Heard only on Space Out Weekend at spacedoutradio.com. Looking for news beyond the mainstream news? Head to spacedoutradio.com and check out the SOR Spacewire. This is Spaced Out Radio's Eric Markham, News Director for the SOR Spacewire. Daily, I will bring you intriguing stories and outlandish reports from what's going on around the world. UFO sightings, paranormal activity, conspiracies, alternative health, and so much more. And if you have news, email me at news at spacedoutradio.com. Attention Spaced Out Radio listeners. For only $5 a month, you can join Spaced Out Radio Space Travelers. Your membership at spacedoutradio.com will give you access to private fan area on the website, get you a monthly newsletter, draws for monthly swag, and a whole lot more. Sign up today to become a part of the Spaced Out Radio experience. Strange creatures lurking in the night, the sounds of wood knocking in the forest, odd happenings right out of a fictional world. These are the reports I love. Hi there, this is author Ronald Murphy, and I would love it if you join me and Spaced Out Radio host Dave Scott the second Wednesday of every month on our journey into the unknown land of cryptozoology at spacedoutradio.com. From Mothman to Frogman and everything in between, hey, they don't call me the crypto guru for nothing. Greetings and salutations, space travelers, from the Chronicles of the Unknown team. What is Chronicles of the Unknown? I keep hearing about this thing. It's a new paranormal reality TV show based right here in beautiful British Columbia, Canada. Follow our team as we uncover claims of activity on the Caribou Gold Rush Trail. You can also follow us here every third Monday where two members of our team will be available to answer your questions. We'll give you some equipment updates and some of our experiences on the road. Right here on Spaced Out Radio. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. With their money-back guarantee and the many benefits, how can you afford not to get one? Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com for mind, body, and spirit, and expect a miracle. Patrolling the Pacific Northwest, we are always on the lookout for the strange and unassuming stories that real people are experiencing. Hi, I'm Vincent Zunza from Pacific North Weird. Me and Alexandra Sullivan have teamed to bring to you those odd stories that never seem to make it into the mainstream story so weird that we'll leave you scratching your head wondering, is this real? It's as real as it gets with Pacific North Weird. 
You can watch our videos right here at spacedoutradio.com. Find yourself constantly looking up in the sky, looking for answers? Have you had extraterrestrial contact? Are you an abductee? Looking for answers to your experiences? Hi there, I'm R. Keith Andrews, Spaced Out Radio's resident ET expert. Join me live the first Friday of every month where I take questions from the Spaced Out Radio chat room and help you understand those from the far off world. It's two hours of knowledge every experiencer should listen to. Hope to see you there. Hey everybody, this is Patrick Webster Small and I'm here to bring you the Webster Phenomena every Saturday night live at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern. If you're looking for aliens and extraterrestrials, well, we've got them. Big and tall, short and small, you're bound to find what you're looking for. So join me on the Webster Phenomena right here on Space Out Radio. Hi there, this is Jolene with Revealer Reiki and Readings, and I want you to relax. Let me help you chill out and get in touch with your body, mind, and soul. In this busy world, sometimes we need to let go, and this is where I can help. Visit my website, rivuletrnr.wix.com forward slash rivulet r and r, or my Facebook page, Rivulet R and R, to set up an appointment for relaxation, Reiki, or readings, no matter where you are. It's time for you to make time for you. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box, the iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Every month on Spaced Out Radio, we look into the deep and dark reports of cryptids roaming around the world with me, Rob Morphy from Cryptopia.us. I would love it if you would join me and host Dave Scott as we delve into the most arcane stories and reports regarding creatures of the unknown. My job is to hunt down the details and bring the evidence forward to you. These aren't your regular Bigfoot stories I'm talking about either. You can find out more about crypto history at spacedoutradio.com. Tonight's edition of Spaced Out Weekend is brought to you by spacedoutradio.com, where you can now sign up to become a Space Traveler member. Now, for the final time tonight, here's Spaced Out Weekend's James Tyson. Um, go ahead, James. Hello, welcome everybody, and hopefully we've got you know, here at Space Out Weekend. Hello, this is James Tyson, and I am broadcasting from a little log cabin on the four goals here on the floor.
putting a noose around Seabring's head, for example. David is also writer and producer of The House at the End of the Drive, Six Degrees of Helter Skelter, and Get Famous. Now, if you ever wanted to go on a ghost hunt like on TV, now you can come to David's house on your own and be a guest investigator in this paranormal hotspot that has been featured on TV shows, including Ghost Hunters, My Ghost Story, Paranormal Witness, Haunted History, Ghost Adventures, and Ghost Paranormal Witness, Haunted History, yeah, I already said that, Adventures, Aftershocks, that is the Omen House. Now, built by David and his father in 1999, the house is wildly haunted. It sits in Beverly Hills, just north of the famous Sunset Boulevard, down the private drive from the Sharon the murders of August 9th, 1969, at the hands of Charles Manson and his family. You can bring your own ghost hunting equipment if you want and test it at this spot, wildly known for paranormal activity. If you want, uh, or if you don't have any ghost hunting equipment, you will be happy to provide you with some of theirs for the investigation. Now, be a part of the seance that has historically provided very interesting encounters. Uh, check out some of the links that he has on his website. You can go to uh, you can go to David's website, uh, theomenhouse.com. And uh, let me see what else I can tell you. We were just talking off there that he has 16 cameras in there running. And uh, you know, half the time I go to a paranormal investigation and uh, can't find anything. So or can't, I don't know where, where to put a camera, but uh, David's house, he's got it rigged and ready to go to help you out. Again, I uh, want to welcome David Holman. Hi, David. How are you tonight? Very good, James. How are you doing? I'm good. That's all the time we have for tonight, so I like to thank you for coming out. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. But have a good one. Nice to have you. Have a good one. That was fun. Hey, uh, since we're nice nice talking to you, James, how do you go back to taking care of business here? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know it's good stuff. Hey, um, we, talk, we talked last, uh, and you hadn't put out the house at the end of the drive as yet. But I just feel a little have not. Playing a, oh, you haven't? It's not hit, hit out yet? It has not hit out yet, no. Thank you, Dr. Mr. Producer. Please, please, please get in touch with us. We'd love to. If from you, we are dying to take it out. <laughs> Pardon the pun. Oh, that would be fun. Yes, we'd like to take it out theatrically for a limited theatrical release and then out to a, a little bit more release uh, worldwide. But yeah, it's a fun oh, story. Good. The uh, the movie is um, inspired by the true events, um, both an intermingling of the, of the Tate murders and of my personal experiences and those of dear friends. As a matter of fact, including a, a, a scene based upon Dr. Gray Taft's um, first, rec- I guess, first traumatic experience that he had here in the house with the uh, paranormal that he attributed it to. Um, the story goes that Barry came to the house, went through the house, and uh, I guess when, when he went home a couple days after he left, he calls me up and says, you know, I'm having some strange, violent sexual dreams. And I said, what is a strange, violent, sexual dream? And he goes, well, look, this is the scene. I go to sleep, and I fall you know, There's a scene where I'm sitting on a bed, and there's three or four naked women, these girls that are all sitting there massaging me and dripping candle wax onto my stomach. And all of a sudden, I start feeling my stomach, and I start feeling pain coming from my stomach. So I look up. And I hunt, look up to look down at my stomach, and I see them starting to tear my stomach open. And I said, that's pretty wild and strange. He goes, yeah, that's not the strangest part of it. I said, okay. He goes, they start tearing my guts out. I'm going, all right. He goes, and then I wake up. I said, yeah, I would wake up too. That's pretty hair-raising. And he says, I go into the uh, kitchen, and I make myself some warm milk. And I figure, you know, 10 minutes later, I'm... It's over, so I go to bed. Right as soon as I fall into deep sleep, the dream picks up where it left off. And I said, what? He goes, the what? dream picks up where it left off. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. And he says, I can't explain it, but I wake up and I go back into the kitchen. I spend another 10, 15 minutes sitting there thinking about things trying to clear my head. 
go back to bed, and it picks up again later after I go back to bed, right where I left off. And he said, this has been happening for the past three or four nights. The same exact dream over and over and over, where he wakes up, and the whole thing with Pete starts right where he left off. I'm like, oh my God, that is crazy. And I said, have you ever had anything experience-wise like that in your life? He goes, never in my entire life have I ever had a repetitious dream more than once, and more than twice, more than three times, never in a million years. Not like that. So I incorporate that scene into the movie because, you know, right, you know, it's great. It's really, it's twisted. It's Twilight Zone up when you think about it. We really, when we played the scene out, I wrote the scene, and we incorporate it into the film, it is very much Twilight Zone up. But what you just heard about the girl disemboweling the guy and him looking up in his stomach, that scene takes place in my movie for a as I just said. Um, it was wild. Um, it was a great story. I fictionalized the Shantae murders, so I kept true to the, uh, the victims. And yeah, I want to straighten some things out. A, um, I said that, that, that Charlie had did come back to the house. Well, as a matter of fact, Vincent Bergliosi, may he rest in peace, in his book, Helter Skelter, he says that somebody came to the house and moved John and Jay's body because at the front door there's a, there's a blood pool and it only matches John and Jay's blood type. And then in the backyard, there's blood stain evidence on the grass that leads to a spot that there's no body. And the, the blood stain that trail out there is also Shannon and Jay's blood. So somebody took the bodies, they stopped at the front door, dragged them out the front door to the, to the backyard, stopped, brought them back in after they couldn't do it. And I said what happened was is Manson had basically tried to set up Shannon and Jay in a pseudo-sexual position. But because rigor mortis had set in, or something that they couldn't be posed in the position that Manson wanted them in, he dragged them back in the house and put the rope around their necks. And oh, I okay. remember that it was basically a figurative statement that said it was it was Jay Steven's baby, not Roman Polanski's baby. That's why the rope was connecting the two of them together. And same with oh. Ronnie, when Ronnie when Ronnie Howard. Um, Susan Atkins' roommate or cellmate in uh, up at uh, I think it's Corcoran State or they were no Silver Brand Penitentiary told her about the disposition of the crime scene. It didn't ring true that the way that the girl had that Susan Atkins had told Bonnie, her roommate about the crime scene. She said nothing about the rope. So what happened was is because Susan Atkins didn't put the rope around her neck. It was Manson that did that after they had left. Plus, the police in the evidence in the report say that there's a couple of witnesses that say there were two men arguing between 1.30 and 2.30 in the morning that they say were coming from that area, around that area, being that house that is echoing up from the canyon. So if you see what I'm saying, it all fits in. So they know that somebody... But we always even said to a friend of mine who's a producer that made a movie with Bob Leosi that he was involved in this movie, said, well, he knows that somebody came back to the house and moved the body. He just doesn't think it was Manson. And I said, look, I live up here. And all it would have taken was for the Manson to have driven up to Yellow Drive proper. The police would have been at the bottom of the driveway and set up a barricade at the bottom of the driveway and thereby isolating anybody that's going up and down the driveway. There's the police from the stop the car going up the other drive late night. The Manson drove up, saw nobody was there. There were no police there. Plus, the other two houses, the people were not slaughtered like Manson had called the, you know, the, the, the troops, so to speak, to go out there. They were told to kill the people at the house next door to the state house, and then two houses, you know, the house next door to that house going up the driveway, and they didn't. What was the, any idea what the uh, purpose of killing those other people were? Just the invest, uh, in the event they order witnesses? Um, they were supposed to, but they didn't. I don't know. It was just Manson's way of carrying out his crime. He wanted to be very dramatic. He um... Well, maybe he wanted to make it look like it wasn't that house that was targeted. Just you know, it was one of three. It was all three of them. Well, like I said, he, they were supposed to, but they never did go to the houses next door. Interesting. That is good. 
so yeah. just for for our listener, um, where, why did you and your dad kind of pick that that property to build on, and what did it look like when you first uh, looked at the the lot you wanted to build on? Well, the reason why we got the lot is because the lot, first of all, was 150 feet down the driveway from where Shan Chase House stood. So we got the lot because it was a foreclosure. My dad saw it in the Sunday Times, uh, it was 1998, November of 98. He finished, he actually bought it in, in uh, January of 1999, um, and bought it because it was a steal of $40,000 with $100,000 worth of improvement. You know, there were caissons and wow. also basically a naked hillside, a vacant hillside that was there with some caissons and rebar on the property. And my dad, who's a builder, said, this is incredible. This is, this is 10% of the actual value, which would be about close to $300,000. Plus, you've got $100,000 worth of property value included in that. And there's 13 caissons, which if they prove to be good and usable, You've got caissons and rebar already in place on the property, so you don't have to worry about having a drill rig come out there and drill the holes, put in the rebar, and then pour the concrete. It's already there for you, so it was already included. It was, it was just, like I said, $400,000 worth of, of real estate with the improvement. We got it for $40,000. That's why I live here. It had nothing to do with anything else, in spite of what people think that, uh, yes, David... David did the 13 ghosts. He built the house that's a haunted house because he wanted to trap the ghosts. It's like, no, no yeah, it's that. It's, you know, or I wanted to be close to Sharon Tate's house. I was just so in love. Look, when I built this house, Sharon Tate's house was already destroyed five years earlier. It was gone by 1994. So when we bought the lot in 1999, it had been five years flat out removed. And there was a new money project sitting on it, Bella Bella, that actually incorporated to get away with a remodel in California. If you leave a bearing wall from the original house, you can get away with doing a remodel. And that means you can save lots of time and lots of money in getting your plans laid out and having a permit for new construction. Because if you go for new construction, it means that you have to start from a clean slate. If you go with a remodel, you basically submit plans under a remodel, so you've already got an existing permit for the property already. So now all you're doing is saying, okay, we got one bearing wall, and in the case of the Tate House, we had two bearing, I think it was two bearing walls, and the original floor from the kitchen were built, that Harvey Weintraub was built when he built it, because we talked to Harvey, because he was trying to sell my father the house back in 1999 when we were building this house. And um, my father, being a builder, spoke to Harvey because he was interested in seeing what's going on, and he was a neighbor. And uh, Harvey basically told my father what the scoop was on the property and showed us the whole place. And yeah. um, it was it was it was a meandering monstrosity. And what I mean was the house was just like I can't explain how how much it reminded me of the Winchester uh, mystery house. And I swear to God, I kid you not, it was, it's hard to explain. It had incredibly tall, tall ceilings, but it had incredibly large, large, large fireplaces. And when I say incredibly large, large, I'm talking about something on the lines of, and picture this, an old English castle where you had nothing but three foot, four foot thick stone walls. You had to have a gosh darn room with logs in it. I don't mean pieces of timber. I mean two foot thick tim logs are like eight feet long <laughs> in, a, in, a, in, a, in a kind of a um, fireplace crate that's extra, extra large. That's how big this guy's fireplaces were, what Harvey had done there. I was like, I, I went in and I said, holy shit, Harvey. I said, what the fuck? And it literally had, and I kid you not, eight foot wide. So you say eight foot across by about six foot tall by about five, six feet deep fireplaces in these rooms. There might have been 20 foot tall rooms. And I'm like going, hardly, I say, I said, what in the, and my father's like, hey, we should go to the kitchen. So we go to the kitchen. He had a thickened pizza oven 
Like, like the ones you have at the California Pizza Kitchen, like that yeah. big. And it's like, oh my God, you've got a wood fire pizza oven. And then I went and I looked at this other thing, it had a rotisserie. And it had about two foot diameter, two, two, two foot diameter, um, flues, meaning these, these steel pipes that went up to go take the smoke out of this barbecue pit that was in the house. I said, I feel like I'm in Jolly Old England in the 14th century. And it's like, who, brought, who brings in the, the, the latest cats, the 400 pound boar, and puts it on the spit? <laughs> the oven and the kitchen. I'm like, this is crazy, man. It's like, and then there were rooms that just didn't. They went into other rooms that just like went into alcoves that were like dead ended. I'm going, this is crack. I was like, okay. And he ended up selling it to somebody for like ten million dollars. So he ended up building, and like I said, it was just Harvey was telling me he had problems with the laborers when he was working on it. And stuff. So I was like, what well, time? We have high turnover of laborers here. And I'm like, wow. I said, you wonder why? He goes, yeah, we just have lots of problems with things here happening. I'm like, wow, that is crazy shit, Harvey. And my dad was like, yeah, if I can get it for a steal, if I get the steal, I get the steal. Stay proud of me. But it never happened because he wanted and had too much money invested in this. And my father was going to give him the, the 10 to 12, 13 million he wanted at the time. So. But you got, you got your house built. Uh, yeah. and your, you and your father moved in there. When did the activity start? Uh, like basically the day you moved in or was it, uh, kind of screwing up the builders and what was going on or? When yeah, you know, construction, we, we kind of noticed stuff was happening. My laborers were saying, Dave, were you here late in the evening? That's just why you said late in the evening. Was, well, not late in the evening. They said, it's later after six, seven o'clock. I said, why? And they said, well, because, um, you know, some of the tools were going from one room to the other, or one room, or one floor to the other, and some of the stuff was missing one day, and it would turn up the next day, and it's like, no. And then, at the end, six months before we were done, I said, a couple of other laborers, and I said, hey, do you guys have any great experiences here in the house during construction? And one of the guys said, yeah. Um, because, uh, I said, uh, what happened? He goes, well, about six months ago, in the middle of July, I was downstairs, and the, uh, level working and uh, I uh, heard voices and footsteps from the top floor so I came running up the staircase which is a spiral staircase to the top floor and I go Mr. Roman that's David so it's very deep and he's asking to speak in Spanish because he's from El Salvador and he says he doesn't hear anybody so he just so he looks out in the front of the house and he says there's nobody in the front of the house no cars so he looks out further, looks up and down the driveway, he goes, it's totally empty. And I said, yeah, I've been here late, like six, seven o'clock. Place is always empty in the summer, it's always light and no one's around. And he goes, that's what I mean. It doesn't make sense. So he goes back downstairs and he starts working. Five minutes later, voices and footsteps on the top floor. So he comes running upstairs and he looks around and he goes, David, hello, hello, and no one's there. He says, that's it. He goes back downstairs and starts packing his bags. Now, the third level at the time was he went, he had a staircase, that went down to the third level, which was slamming. It was all open, which now was enclosed and put a doorway there. But it was all open, 11 foot tall ceilings going into the theater room, which is now the theater room. <coughs> Excuse me. But it's all open. So he's in the other room adjacent to that, to that opening, like seven, ten feet away. And he says, the whole sudden, he says, I started hearing footsteps. I said, yeah, he goes, they're coming down the staircase. And at the time, we had the, we had the, um, the wrought iron staircase, and that's what we had instead of um, stairs. We just had, you know, two by, not two by four, but two by ten inch planks that were there on the stairs, basically, that were in the um, framework. And he says, something was coming down the staircase. He hears like boots going down the staircase, going louder and louder, coming down the stairs, <laughs> it's going louder and louder. He says, it's coming towards the very bottom, and he says, he finally got to the bottom of the landing. He came out from the doorway 10 feet away at the, you know, the bottom of the landing, from the other room, and he's got a hammer in his hand, he goes, who is it? And, and it's fully really light, it's like six o'clock, so it's really, really light. And he says, it's like 90 degrees. He goes, he comes walking forward, and he looks around, he says, there's nobody there. He goes, and all of a sudden it happens. He feels like this ice cold breeze comes whizzing across the middle of his neck, literally right below his hair, right below the um, the hairline, 
and right above the shoulder blades. So it's just that like three inch section. He says it's freezing cold. And he screams, Dos mios, dos mios, yame boy, yame boy. He says the hairs in his neck just sitting straight up. He's sleeping as he's running out of the house. And he says he didn't come back for six weeks. And I said, Is that when you told the guys that you were out of town to you of your mother who was ill in San Salvador? And he goes, Yeah. And I said, And why did you come back? And he goes, I didn't have a paycheck for the prior three weeks. He said, Holy oh. shit. I said, I remember that because during that time you were basically supposed to be the book of files in the master capsule. And because you weren't there, I got so frustrated and tired of waiting. I basically decided to put the files in myself. And to this very day, including very last night, I was on the floor on the tar- on the tar- on the master capsule looking at the files going, Yeah, this is proof. Anybody wants to ask and see proof that I wasn't there. Uh, Kidding about the story about my labor, to come in and take a look at these tiles. Because literally, one tile is just a little bit taller than the other. The spacing between the tile is not uniform all the way around the master bathroom where it counts. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ, this is, this is just too funny. I said, if anybody doubts my story, when I come into this bathroom after I go to the rest of the house, I said, then we go, oh my God, it's true, it's true. You know, 
when the sphere would manifest in that location, we would get measurements that would peak on our meters, and they would return to a normal reading. And I said, what, what are you talking about? He says, well, the electromagnetic field reading of the geomagnetometers would spike at around 2,000 milligauss, and then would return back to about three, four 400 milligauss. I said, okay. And he goes, in your house, it's always spiked at 2,000 milligauss. So that's what Barry was talking about with the, um, <clears throat> when he called the house the um, Mount Everest of Haunted Houses and the Disneyland for the Dead, it was directly related to that specific part of the fact that the house at the time, our meters could only register 2,000 milligauss peaking at. We have since recorded 6,000 milligauss positive and negative in the house. And what the story is on that is that we've got so much energy in here, it's hard to, um, to really understand, but it's quite easy to feel. Let's put it that way. Yeah, what is it? Uh, it's a bit of a tangle to me. Did Barry come up with any idea where that comes from? Well, what Barry suggested is, is that it's coming from the, um, I guess, what would you say? He says coming from the Earth, naturally occurring in the uh, form of a... Oh, what did he say it was? He says there's probably a large lava flume or a large lava tube somewhere down under the earth here. And as it's irradiating its natural electromagnetic field through the earth, it's coming in contact with the 30 foot or the 25 foot deep caissons, which are reinforced with the um, steel rebar. And that that's then going all the way through the gray beams throughout the entire you know, subframing of the house connecting to these three steel columns that are holding up the two steel eye beams that are basically girders that you would see in a skyscraper that are crossed basically through the, sec the third floor support system and then going through the second floor the support system. So basically that basically become totally magnetized and you've got a 30 foot broad iron spiral staircase that's acting like a gigantic coil in the middle of this house. So you basically so you've got, live on your, your very own eating rod. Yeah, basically I live in a big, yeah. like, gigantic Ferris, um, uh, what do you call it, Ferris cage. Oh, lovely. Now, uh, you were saying once before, and this was, I found one kind of interesting, this is over and above, we'll get back to the, uh, the Tate and, and, and Jay's, uh, entity yeah. that's walking around with the First Nations guys, but, uh, you know, Valentino is still in the house of Christ. Well, it, it goes well beyond just, just those three famous individuals. These recorded voices of individuals that have directly related to the individuals that have come to the house. Meaning that, no offense to those who have, you know, died down the street, but the house is basically a gigantic, giant, lack of better words, it's a ghost flop house. Oh, wow. And because, okay. you've got to remember, because it's got such high elevated EMF levels, it kind of provides the sense of comfort for spirits that if they can see this in the darkness on the horizon, they can just, I should say, matriculate over here and just hang out here and visit. And they do, quite often. You know, I, I did a paranormal investigation last week where the Tingo and Sonia was such a high energy kid that he wandered in the soul in the neighborhood before I was in the bedroom. <laughs> And they had all these stretched out of the door and got, you know, they laid them for a couple of days and they'll come back in because it gives you one big, you know, energy. And, uh, don't really fix that. So it's old enough to understand how to shut off and stuff. But block it. But I, mean, I, I just couldn't imagine living in a house that is a physical house itself with, uh, you know, such a big room and such a big open. Well, what's interesting is, yeah, let me tell you this. Let me find what I find interesting. In the past 10 years, in the past 14 years I've lived here, 10 of those years, 10 years ago, I was first approached by the one and only Lisa Williams after I was on the Ghost Hunters show. Since then, I'll tell you all the famous paranormal investigators, celebrities that have been here. And I find it very, very interesting because I just discussed this with a friend. It said, you know, have you got Amy on it? Have you gotten this one out there? Got... And I said, hmm. So we went through and we listed all of the famous ones that have existed in this band, et cetera, et cetera. 
And I said, since the first time I was on a show, which was Ghost Hunters, Lisa Williams called me up, literally, or contacted me within about two weeks. <laughs> it was the funniest thing. And at the time, you got to remember about 10 years ago, Lisa Williams was still doing her show. Um, the Lisa Williams show, or whatever, the experience, whatever it was called. She was doing that She's show. She's a psychic, right? She's a psychic, yeah. Yeah. And you got to remember, this is when, like, when, when, uh, what's his face? Edward. Um, I forgot his name. John Edward was doing his show. And, you know, Von Fraud was doing his, et cetera, et cetera. So she was, she was hot stuff. Seriously. So she comes over and I said, yeah, you can come over as long as you don't bring your, uh, your group and you don't start videotaping. I said, this is just for you. She goes, no, I want to see your house. I'm dying to see it. I'm very curious. It was fascinating to see it on the ghost country. Since then, well, we obviously had Chris Fleming on the show, so he's been back a couple times since and wanted to. Again, he wanted to express interest in coming back here, which I think is a natural thing. Um, James Von Prague came out here with Larry King Live. Um, let's see what TV shows. I met Jason Gates from Haunted Collector at uh, the temporary, uh, what was it, Ghost Paracon up in, uh, we got Santa Paula at the end there a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago. And I also had Dana, met Dana Workman because she was working with Jack, uh, Jack Osborne on Haunted Highway. So she came over as well. But outside of that, and of course, outside of Z Baggins, um, and of course, Aaron and Nick and Jason Haas from the, uh, Ghost Hunter show. And, uh, that's about it. When you think about all of the people that are out there that do all this paranormal stuff, those are all the people. So forget the two shows. Forget Zach and Nick and Aaron and Jason from those two shows. You got <coughs> maybe one, two, three, four of them. And forget Von Prague because he came with, uh, you know, whatchamacallit. He came with Larry King Live. But outside of that, Lisa Williams, Jason, um, you know, Jason Gates, Dana Workman, and that's about it. Amy Ann, I've been in contact with. I've asked, she, I asked her to come over and check out the house. She was going to and then basically disappeared. Um, but nobody else. And I just find it so interesting. I said to him, or he said to me, he goes, isn't it strange because all these people claim to be paranormal interested, blah, blah, blah. And you live in a place that's so wildly haunted, just such an experience, yet they haven't reached out to you to want to come see it for their own purpose and curiosity for the sake that that's what they do and that's their field of interest. And I, yeah. saw, and I said, and I said this, I said, I said, that's like saying to a gemologist, here, we have an opportunity to go check out the Hope Diamond on a private, um, a, a, a private visit, a private tour to see it up close and actually see it and touch it. Don't you want to go? Not one single one of them. I'm talking about Josh Gates. I'm talking about Amy Allen. I'm talking about all of them. I just don't quite understand that. It doesn't make sense. And what's interesting is it's not like I'm not in the same city with them. I've met Josh Gates. I've invited him up to the house, you know, for whatever reason. You know, he's, he's off doing his show. And it's like, okay, you live in L.A. You don't shoot the show but three months a year. You know, um, are you a poser or are you interested in the paranormal? Because if somebody said to you, look, I want to show you something that's really unique and you have an opportunity to see it, and it's in Boyd Arbach. I've invited Lloyd down here for the past 10 years to see the house, and it's like, it's like, man, it's not radioactive. I've lived here without any problems. I've had people come over. It's, it's not kryptonite to Superman. I just, I don't understand it. I so I, you know, uh, a lot of these guys will go, okay, I live in L.A., and we're going to do an episode, but I've never been to this place in Florida before, so let's go there. Or I've never been to New Orleans, or I've never been to Paris or London. They don't want to go four blocks away. They're, I'm they're not talking paid. about this show. I'm not talking about this show either. No. I'm talking about to see it for themselves. To see oh, just coming over to visit. Yeah. Come over to see it. I've asked Kate, I've asked Josh Gates to come over. Um, I got Amy. I mean, I'm just talking about so much of these, you know, people are like, wow. Well, scratch your head, wonder why. 
Yeah, it's hard because, you know, is it something that uh, you're not kind of buying into? Like, I know that, you know, I've, I've talked to people, I've seen I've seen a lot of your video, uh, I've seen a couple episodes of Ghost Hunters, or the episode of Ghost Hunters when they were there. It stuff happens daily. Uh, and it, it's, you know, you, you, you're living a life in a, in a, a wildly haunted house. And if anyone wants to, well, for example, it's like, what a great place. We're talking about this off there. You, you're going to rent that place out for uh, Halloween, a Halloween party? Oh well, I, I should have month of October. I'm renting the house. I'm renting the house out for people to rent. And, you know, just starting now, as a matter of fact, to rent the house out for private events, ghost hunt investigation events for themselves. You know, um, really, that's what we're trying to do. Well, you look at a place like uh, one of the uh, ladies, uh, one of our, our guests that's on here has uh, ghost hunters of Virginia. They're going down to the Waverly Hill Sanitarium or Sanatorium in March, April, and they're taking a couple of our listeners along with them. But the, you know, Waverly Hill is like 75 bucks to go on a tour for a couple hours, maybe. You know, your place, what was it, uh, 4 p.m. till 6 a.m. or something? Yeah. You know, for two grand for 20 people or for 10 people, that's. 10, 20, 30 people, it doesn't, you know, we were doing the investigation for six hours, we were charging $100 a pop a person for tickets to get in, which included food, and it was about 25 people, and that was for six hours, that's $2,500 for six hours. Yeah, but you only for $2,000, so, yeah, but you know. Honestly, you only make it, because I've seen your food, so you only make it
and they're rolling 24-7. And what's funny is, is one of them during one of our investigations this past June, sees upstairs at the dining room table eating some of the smorgasbord of food that we have laid out at the uh, spread, and he hears a voice say, oh yeah, and he goes, David? David? And he starts looking around for me, and you see clearly that I've already gone downstairs out of frame of the cameras. They go, all right, I'm going downstairs, and he obviously didn't hear me because he starts looking around for me upstairs, and another voice says, uh-huh, and he goes, oh, <laughs> he starts laughing like, okay, it's a spirit, that's cool. That's cool, and we watched on the video, and you could hear it clear as a bell, this person saying, oh, yeah. And another EVP that was captured on my birthday on the 23rd of July this year, um, four of my friends, Tim Rose and some friends, went downstairs to the third level guest bedroom, which is notorious stuff happening. Um, it's a spot where Nick Ross got laid out by the spirits during the Ghost Adventures show that was shot three years ago this September. Um, as a matter of fact, today's the fourth. It'll be three years on the sixth when the it hit the fan, so to speak, with Nick. And he was in yeah. that room. And in this case, they were down there screwing around and they had this little Barbie keyboard that somebody left uh, with the uh, people from the Poltergeist movie last, from last September's investigation party they had here. And... Uh, they're sitting on the bed, and they're, they've got their, tor- their tape recorder, and they're recording, the digital recorder, and they're recording and talking. And from the recording, they got a guy's voice saying, What are you doing? Hello? What are you doing in my room? <laughs> and I'm like, What the hell? And they caught it on the recorder, so I looked it up on the video, and sure enough, you can hear this man, this old man's voice, clear as a bell, say exactly the same thing. And then the keyboard starts playing 20 seconds later. It, it's yeah, just it wild. Wild. The stuff that we've got. It's just like I said, you talked about people go out to gray gyps, and I said, look, the odds of you finding a ghost really as a are slim to none because of this. And people hate me saying this. Look, Harry Houdini wasn't famous because of his telling lies. He was famous because he told the truth. And he's a truth seeker, and he was, he was a great um, escape artist and a magician. But he didn't like to lie, and he made sure of that. And I, in the vein of Houdini, I'm sorry, but the fact of the matter is, is, as I said last night on a live broadcast, you take a tin can. You see that tin can? That's like a human body. And this is the analogy I'm going to use to you. When you pour out the contents of that soda can into a glass, you've basically taken the soul out of the body. So now that that tin can that had weight and had some substance to it, that soil has now been removed, so it's lighter than it was before. When you take that tin, tin can, you put it in the garbage can, it's analogous to what you do when you put a person's body into the ground. Your soul is removed from that body. So the fact that you're going to sit there and say that the person's soul is traveling with their body is not only disingenuous, it's not physically, mentally possible, logically possible, in the words of, of, of Spock. It's not logical, Captain. It's not logical. It doesn't make sense. The umbilical cord has been severed. The second you die, wherever you are, your spirit goes away, separates from that body. Everybody talks about this, but nobody takes it a step further when they say, I'm going to go off to a graveyard. I'm going to look for graves. I'm going to look for ghosts. It's like, that's how you're thinking when you say that. Think about that for a second. The only place that a ghost is going to be with the exception of many, with only one grave graveyard, the only few grave sites, do I say, that are haunted. And these are places where somebody's buried pretty close, is not where they died, but pretty damn close to where they died, i.e. Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. What is it? It's a national cemetery. What is it? It's also a national battlefield. What do you know? Yeah. And when they talk about it, usually it's not the cemeteries, it's the battle sites where the battles took place that they will see formations of, you know, Union or Army, Union soldiers in a row marching in formation. Or, you know, or the other way, the Confederate soldiers marching in formation. 
one of the things that I, I've always found in regards to graveyards, you can get a ghost to a graveyard. You just have to read their name a couple of times on a tombstone. And if they're, they kind of show up, if they kind of look at you like, uh, yeah, what are you talking about? Who are you and why are you saying my name? But they're not, like, if I was dead, why hang around a bunch of dead people? Like, why would you, know, you know, why would you, why would you want to hang, how, why would you want to hang around a spot where all you've got are the disemboweling and the, the disintegrating body parts and bodies of individuals? It's not a pleasant place for a spirit to go sit next to a gosh on rotting corpse unless, even if you're the most vain boy or son of a bitch in life, what torture must that be to sit next to your rotting corpse and look at this and run? Look at that one. That's what I once looked like. Oh my God, how sad. I'm turning into mush and splush and splash and mush and yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm going to go hang out with him. <laughs> so what that is, is you hang yeah. out. See, here's the irony. Wherever you go, wherever you live, that's where your spirit's going to hang out. Wherever you hung out when you were alive, the people don't get 99% of the places where people exist and are today are haunted. Yeah. Yeah, we, we run into a lot of those who just, or people at a, you know, they'll be near a cemetery and they'll, they'll be lost one, but, which I honestly think kind of at home and then everyone piles in the car and heads to the cemetery and has a funeral and the spirits walk around going, oh, this is kind of cool. And then they'll hop in the cars and leave and they're going, hey, wait, I came with Dawn and it left already, so they will come back and visit me. And they, like, where you were familiar with, graveyard. I keep hearing yeah. this spirit saying, where you were familiar with, and because you did not visit the cemetery when you were alive. Whatever, oh. whatever, whatever, whatever I'm hearing is, whatever, whatever romantic thing he's speaking of is not true. That makes no sense, again, logic. Because apply a drop of logic and everything clears itself up. It's a remedy for all your, your, your misunderstandings, he says. He says, think about it. Where you were familiar with will be the places you will visit upon. And it goes back to what the Romans, what the Roman poets said about death, and what the Greek philosophers said about death. You will always see the spirits of those who died where they were familiar to those roads that they walked upon, and the rooms and the places that they habitated. That's where they will go. They will not go to unfamiliar places. Why would you if you've never been there before? It's not like, I'm going to go see Rome now that I'm dead. No, I'm sorry. That's not how it works. You are not free to go for venture off to see the second part of the world. You had on your bucket list. Your bucket list is kept, checked out, done. You are now kind of, in a sense, down to memories and places that you are familiar with. It's not like, all right, now I'm going to go see the top of Mount Everest. Now that I wanted to go there, I wish you a child. No chance, dude. Not going to happen. And you can't travel to the ends of the earth. And I'm going to go to deep outer space. I always wanted to see space. Sorry, I don't think, I think there's a certain amount of rationale and a certain amount of logic that applies to spirits in the sense that there's a familiarity. And that's why people see spirits in places. And from what I've experienced myself and everything, I don't base it on time books. Because I don't, I think a lot of that that's put out there is done in a lot of ways to basically let us just say profit from that which is there. I think there's a lot of <clears throat> marginal quality material that's put out there, and it's a lot of profit minded individuals that exploit once in a lifetime opportunities to become more so, how should I say, hooked into the main line of getting support from a psychic idea line of making money out of it. I don't mean it in a bad way, I mean it's just people that want to make money as however well they can. And here's an yeah. example. I'm going to forget this one. This woman told me she's had two near-death experiences in her life, and that's when she became immediately psychic. I, I said to her, I said, yeah, I thought to myself, my guide said, goes, no, that's not how it works. It's not because you came close to death that all of a sudden the light switch turned on. That's just not something they said. Because that's just not. She, she, it was like, you know, it, it, there were highly publicized events. And I said, yes, they survived this. And I said, yeah, so nice on you became psychic. All of a sudden, it's just like, it's you, you became psychic. I just said, oh. Well, I think they're always I, psychic. I think it's just, it bounced their vibration up a little bit higher, that's all. Or they get an understanding that there's something else out there. I'll put it to you this way, as, as, I, as I heard from her when I talked to her and I started listening to her and I started picking up stuff from her, 
I did. Yeah, my dad was like, all right. I, yeah, my dad, and yeah, because there, there were things that she said to me that were just struck me as like, John, you know something? It just sounded like a prop. It just sounded like she was taking things that she, she was exploiting what little gifts she had and making more out of it. And when she started to read to me, I said, no, that's not, no, 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 no. I said, stop, 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 stop. I said, okay, go on, tell me more. And I just sat there and stretched my head and said, you know, you got to practice and work on it because she was taking it on the road and starting to make money on it. And I said, as soon as you start copying that stuff, it's, you better be really good and accurate. Otherwise, you can't really sell a bill of goods that a donkey won't look at and say, no, you're full of shit. And you're, and you're, and you're telling a, a, a barge of shit down the river. And it was very clear. It was like, come on, you can't do that. But she went off and did it, and I said, you know, if you want to do that, fine, but don't ask me to be a part of your, you know, give you a letter of recommendation, because I couldn't, in good, in good faith, because I knew otherwise. Yeah, and yeah I got a scary guy that, sorry, go ahead. No, I just think I've seen, I've seen a lot of people that want to do that, and then this whole thing is like, look, I've been in enough psychics in my life when I was a kid, because I was always looking for answers, and I wasn't going to trust my own intuition to listen to my own guide. No, I was looking outside myself, and I paid dearly for okay. the answer for years. Okay, guys. Hey, hold on. Uh, we got to go for a break right now. Yeah. Ah, oh, shit, bye. Right. Okay. <laughs> hold that wrap. <laughs> I got to write that we down, too. Hi there, this is Dave Scott, and I would like to invite you to listen Monday through Friday right here on Spaced Out Radio. Three hours a night of the top stories with the top guests, ranging topics from UFOs to ETs, ghosts to Sasquatch, and everything in between. We are live every night, 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern. So come on in and take a listen at spacedoutradio.com. Spaced Out Radio will take you out of this world. Hi there, this is your psychic medium, Joanna, and I would love it if you would join us every other Sunday on Spaced Out Weekend. With host James Tyson, we'll bring you personal psychic messages on two mediums and a large. Questions about love, life, career changes. We would love it if you would come and join us live. Call in and listen in for the experience. Allow us to open the doors to your other side. Two mediums and a large. Heard only on Space Out Weekend at spacedoutradio.com. Looking for news beyond the mainstream news? Head to spacedoutradio.com and check out the SOR Spacewire. This is Spaced Out Radio's Eric Markham, News Director for the SOR Spacewire. Daily, I will bring you intriguing stories and outlandish reports from what's going on around the world. UFO sightings, paranormal activity, conspiracies, alternative health, and so much more. And if you have news, email me at news at spacedoutradio.com. Attention Spaced Out Radio listeners. For only $5 a month, you can join Spaced Out Radio Space Travelers. Your membership at spacedoutradio.com will give you access to private fan area on the website, get you a monthly newsletter, draws for monthly swag, and a whole lot more. Sign up today to become a part of the Spaced Out Radio experience. Strange creatures lurking in the night, the sounds of wood knocking in the forest, odd happenings right out of a fictional world. These are the reports I love. Hi there, this is author Ronald Murphy, and I would love it if you join me and Spaced Out Radio host Dave Scott the second Wednesday of every month on our journey into the unknown land of cryptozoology at spacedoutradio.com. From Mothman to Frogman and everything in between, hey, they don't call me the crypto guru for nothing. Greetings and salutations, space travelers, from the Chronicles of the Unknown team. What is Chronicles of the Unknown? I keep hearing about this thing. It's a new paranormal reality TV show based right here in beautiful British Columbia, Canada. Follow our team as we uncover claims of activity on the Caribou Gold Rush Trail. You can also follow us here every third Monday where two members of our team will be available to answer your questions. We'll give you some equipment updates and some of our experiences on the road. Right here on Spaced Out Radio. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. 
With their money-back guarantee and the many benefits, how can you afford not to get one? Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com for mind, body, and spirit. And expect a miracle. Patrolling the Pacific Northwest, we are always on the lookout for the strange and unassuming stories that real people are experiencing. Hi, I'm Vincent Zunza from Pacific North Weird. Me and Alexandra Sullivan have teamed to bring to you those odd stories that never seem to make it into the mainstream. Stories so weird that we'll leave you scratching your head wondering, is this real? It's as real as it gets with Pacific North Weird. You can watch our videos right here at spacedoutradio.com. Find yourself constantly looking up in the sky, looking for answers? Have you had extraterrestrial contact? Are you an abductee? Looking for answers to your experiences? Hi there, I'm R. Keith Andrews, Spaced Out Radio's resident ET expert. Join me live the first Friday of every month where I take questions from the Spaced Out Radio chat room and help you understand those from the far off world. It's two hours of knowledge every experiencer should listen to. Hope to see you there. Hey everybody, this is Patrick Webster Small and I'm here to bring you the Webster Phenomena every Saturday night. Live at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern. If you're looking for aliens and extraterrestrials, well, we've got them. Big and tall, short and small. You're bound to find what you're looking for. So join me on the Webster Phenomena, right here on Space Out Radio. Hi there, this is Jolene with Reveal at Reiki and Readings. And I want you to relax. Let me help you chill out and get in touch with your body, mind, and soul. In this busy world, sometimes we need to let go, and this is where I can help. Visit my website, rivuletrnr.wix.com forward slash rivuletrnr, or my Facebook page, rivuletrnr, to set up an appointment for relaxation, Reiki, or readings, no matter where you are. It's time for you to make time for you. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Every month on Spaced Out Radio, we look into the deep and dark reports of cryptids roaming around the world with me, Rob Morphy, from Cryptopia.us. I would love it if you would join me and host Dave Scott as we delve into the most arcane stories and reports regarding creatures of the unknown. My job is to hunt down the details and bring the evidence forward to you. These aren't your regular Bigfoot stories I'm talking about either. You can find out more about crypto history at SpacedOutRadio.com. Tonight's edition of Spaced Out Weekend is brought to you by SpacedOutRadio.com, where you can now sign up to become a Space Traveler member. Now, for the final time tonight, here's Spaced Out Weekend's James Tyson.
ahead and talk for a little bit. Say something. Yeah. Well, that's one too. Is it moving your little graph thing? Now you're live. Go, guys. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> what the hell happened there? I don't know. <laughs> Okay. Try again, James. Say something. I will. Ah. What? Every other freaking word. Okay.
Go. Welcome back, everybody, to Spaced Out Weekend. Apologizing for this bizarre audio that we're running into, and I really, uh, I really do apologize for this guy. We are speaking to David Ullman. He lives in the Ullman house, which is really cool because that's his last name too. And uh, just to remind everybody, <laughs> if you want to join the Space Out Radio at the War Space Travelers Club, go to spaceoutradio.com. And if you want to go down on the paranormal investigation of Waverly Hill Sanatorium, March April ish, with Ghost Centers of Virginia, let me know and we'll put your name in for a draw. Again, that's the, uh, the group on our uh, Space Out Radio Space Hunters Club. And now I'm in the echo. Okay, then. Anyway, the, um, before the, this extremely long break, yeah, we were talking to David about his issue with psychics and their, uh, and their, uh, he, he was, he was on a good rant about, uh, them, uh, claiming that they have to charge people for things. And, uh, I know what you mean, David, because I, you know, I, I do read all of the cards and 99% of the time I was doing it for free and when I had to cover off some friends, they're actually charging people a hundred dollars for me to do this. And it felt really creepy. But there are people who say that's good energy. And like money is energy and you have to do it. So yeah, there are yeah, good, people good, 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 good luck with that flow job. I mean, um, that's no job. Um, I'm sorry. The universe does not, and I hate to say it, but be honest, if the universe and the theory that you can't take it with you as such, how does that rationally, logically explain itself into the scheme of things? It doesn't. That's because it's bullshit. That is not the way it works. The universe doesn't give a rat's out that you get money or not and exchange is good energy. The universe doesn't look at it like that. Are you kidding me? Come on. Why would the universe look at that and say, oh my God, you didn't get paid because you did something for somebody. Really? What is charity then? What is the act of charity because you gave somebody something they didn't give to you? And who's to say that down the road, karmically speaking, you aren't supposed to give that, that bit of information to that person at that time, and if they were, you were going to get something beneficial to them down the road, not necessarily in this moment, but somewhere down the road. It doesn't have to be, you know, um, as you say, known. I, I think yeah. that, that, that honestly, that's more in the face of, of what the teachings of, uh, you know, some of the other enlightened things would have been. Exactly that. I just don't find that to be the case. I just, um, as you said, I'm fine. Well, that's perfect. So, me and a couple of buddies are coming down to do a free paranormal investigation at your house. You, you, you have about 20 others that have been here to do those paranormal investigations. <laughs> you know, I've, been, I've done, I've done over 100 paranormal investigations up until about three years ago for people that want to come in and see the house. And that was fine and dandy. Except for one thing. It became such a nightmare in the having to clean up after people that had been down into the house. And the carpets got basically knocked down and, you know, shot. Oh, we're going to go just looking around. Oh, we're just, I know, I know you're just gonna, I know you're just gonna, you're just gonna. And that's just dandy. But that just doesn't take care of getting out clean. That just yeah. doesn't take care of the things that need to be done. And after a while, after that many years of the wear and tear, I literally had to rip up all the carpets, have the place totally painted from top to bottom, and have everything basically, um, you know, how should you say, uh, rehab. And I just got yeah. tired of it. And then we started doing the paranormal investigations here, the tours, the Elman House paranormal investigation tours, blah, 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 terrific, they were great. You know, it's just, um, and that became its own little, uh, how should say, endeavor. Yeah. And I am just, I'm ragging on you anyway, because I, I know that it, it, it does put a strain on any time you have somebody coming to a house, you put a strain on the house. And it's a, uh, and especially with the spray, I think last time we talked about, uh, if I went down there, you had a keg of beer. So I, I'm pretty sure that that's, that's not free. <laughs> Like the beer company. Yeah, oh, it's David. Oh, I don't think yeah, you know do David. that anymore. <laughs> Just to have a kegger. Uh, Digger and Dave, though. Drink with the goat. Hey, what, what is your experience and what has happened with, uh, now we were talking about the psychic lady two years back who came down to 
down the driveway and uh, basically as soon as you hit the driveway, things started happening when she started sensing things. What was it? Uh, you did tell me a story once about the, the bar that was down there. You went in and kind of looked around and, you know, it wasn't quite the uh, bar on the Star Wars, but there was a, a number of very cool, uh, we'll say, entities hanging out. You're talking about Mr. Williams when she was here a few years back. Correct. Yeah, she was interesting in the sense that when she came through the house, she had a wild experience with the uh, energy here. And um, what it was is she went to the Aiken War Room and said that there's a Native American who's up on the hillside, so to speak, and his body and remains are on there in the hills. And I'm looking up there and I said, how right? She goes, yeah, but his horse and he had basically were riding across what is now the driveway and his horse reared up, lost its footing and fell down the side of the hill and broke his neck and the rider's back when they fell down the hillside and his remains and his body were left on the side of the hill interred. Interred? Interred. Just literally oh, remains were there. They were just left there. They just were kind of landed in the some turd. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> They lay there funny. Well, that's what you said. They lay there in turds. <laughs> Hold on. Turd. Yes, right, right. Uh, 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 yes. 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 You, you, you remind me of my father. May you rest in peace. The Penser of Penser. He would have cast on that and said, good one. Very good job. I like that. Here's a question for you. With the, with the, um, with the energy that, that, that structure produces, has, have you had somebody that you're related to come back? No. Not one no. of my friends who have passed away, not my relatives, not my parents. None of them have ever come to the house to visit, which is, to say the least, disappointing, but um, <laughs> it, it is what it is. There's nothing I can do to change that fact. I've always wanted to take my best friend, Wendy, who passed away a few years back. It's like, no, she never came back. You know, my mom and my dad never popped in. I like that, so no. And I'm kind of excited to say, I don't want to say it's a disappointment, but it's kind of just, it saddens me, obviously, to have that situation with just go well, that way. It, it, to me, it's kind of a, it's kind of, I look at it as a good thing, my, uh, that if they've cr- actually, quote unquote, crossed over, right? they're not wandering souls, right? Like, I guess, most of the but people here, they would be wandering. <laughs> It's so speculative to know what happened, what doesn't happen. I certainly don't pretend to have any real idea of what I what know. I do know and do not know what happens when you die. And, you know, a lot of different people have said, you know, they, they come back, they can go over, they can come back. And of course, it's like, I don't know. It's all theoretical, honestly, when you think about it. To me, it's, it's exactly that. It's theoretical. It's all theory. Yeah, and that's really what it comes down to. It's, it's hard to know what... Is and what isn't, and that's yeah, a I'm not, real question mark. I don't know. I'm not in a position to want to prove it today either. I'll wait <laughs> for a few more years. I'm not. I'm not making that statement. Just don't you? I don't know what it is that happens. You know, when we die, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I have no idea. What What are the um? What have you been told, and what have you seen in there that connects? Uh, that you believe that. Uh, the spirits from some of the people killed in the mountain uh, family murders are hanging out at your house. Well, in particular, what it was is that I saw the spirit of Jay Sebring a number of years ago um, in my bedroom. And he was there, and what's interesting is that uh, it was one of the same things. It was like there's no reason for him to be there, if that makes any sense to you. Yeah. Um, it's hard to say why was he there. I don't know why he was there. He was there, though. He appeared in the middle of the night in my bedroom um, and actually shouldn't have been there, which is interesting as hell because he shouldn't have been there, and that's the whole thing. He appeared in the middle of the night and was standing there pointing towards the driveway, and it was about 12 years ago, and I looked and I said, oh, my God, I said, you told me that my mom died. You know, my mom was dying of cancer. I said, oh, is this about Felicia? He's flying right now to the European, you know, continent as a, uh, whatchamacallit, as a, uh, flight attendant. 
And he just sat there, and he said he stood there, and he turned, like a quarter turn towards the house next door, which is now there, and um, disappeared. And that was it. And it was the same as God, you know, like, say, gosh, darn thing, but it was just like, I got out of the bed and I said, all right, now 1.37 in the morning, um, what the hell am I going to do about this? And I just basically walked around the upstairs for about now and pondered what I had just experienced and what I just saw. And, um, you know, that was it. And I know I did not recognize it at the time as St. J. Stephen, as a matter of fact. I thought it looked like, I, I didn't recognize it as him, because I thought, as a matter of fact, it could have been a relative of mine that he didn't know that was appearing basically to let me know that my mom had passed away. And that's how I treated it as. So okay. I was like, oh my God, it's a ghost. It's like, no, I didn't you know, react and respond like that. I was more on the lines of, oh my God, he's that relative of mine coming to tell me that mom's dead. And the next morning when I got up, you know, there was no response. I thought my mom was like, hey, you're okay? Yeah, I'm fine. What's going on? <laughs> just, just calling to check how you're feeling. You know, I didn't tell her the whole story. And this experience was based upon what my godfather had seen from years earlier when he lived next to one of my parents' house. On the, the, the night he saw an apparition that materialized in front of him. And he immediately knew, as he, as he said at the time when he woke up, he started thinking about his cousin, I mean his aunt. And he said that he knew at that moment when he saw these, these two apparitions at the foot of his bed, that was related to her. And he went back to bed. He woke up the next day, and he got a call from his cousin. He said, Aunt Sophie is dead. He said, he said, he, he said I told her to Aunt Sophie's thing. He goes, how did you know? And he goes, I don't know. And she goes, yeah, she just died last night in the middle of the night. So what it was is that my godfather had basically seen an app, two apparitions. who were there to warn him that his aunt had just passed away in the middle of the night. Oh, wow. So that's why when I saw my apparition, I didn't, again, the guy was in, it was in the, the period clothes of the 60s, but I didn't make the connection with J.C. Stevens because his hair was kinky, not uh, straight and smooth across the uh, across his forehead, so to speak. Yeah. Now, he didn't have a, someone said the, the J. Sebring may have showed up with a, a, a noose around his neck at one point. No. No, 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 when Jay appeared, he was totally perfectly shaped, he looked fine, he didn't have any gunshot wounds or anything like that to him at all, he was perfectly fine. He didn't look like he was all butchered up or anything like that at all, no. To be honest with you, not at all. How about Sean? Pardon? How about, how about Sharon Tate? Any, uh, any information that, uh, she's, Visited? No, I mean, we've had stuff where people, psychics, have come over and have come in. At least, you know, Williams, again, when she was here, she said she was hearing the spirit of Sharon Tate and that Sharon was clearly speaking to her and communicating with her about what she was going on and stuff. And there's some interesting comments that um, Lisa reported that uh, Sharon had communicated to her when she came in the house about, you know, and all the other spirits were saying, Famously enough, Lisa came into the house, we'll never forget, comes to the top, the landing going down to the third, to the second, I guess, into the uh, living room, and she looks over at the bar to her right, and she goes, David, there's a whole front group of spirits over at your bar. I said, really? And she goes, oh yeah. And she goes, they want me to tell you something. I said, yeah, what's that? And she goes, they want me to tell you how much they like you. I must be appreciate you letting them stay here. I kid you not. And I go, really? And she goes, yes. They really, really like you and appreciate you and letting them just hang here. She goes, she goes, yes. She wants, they want you to know that, you know, they really appreciate you and hang here. She goes, oh, yes. She goes, they can't thank you enough for your hospitality. I'm like, well, you're kidding me. She goes, no. Hmm. I'm like, wow. I was like, well, tell them, you know, I said, for those who died down the street, she goes, I know. She goes, there's Rudolph Valentino, she goes, there's some Native American, there's some other spirits, I see Jay and Shen, but there's a bunch of other spirits I don't recognize, she said, offhand. They're not famous people, but there's for some reason they're here. And I'm like, uh-huh. 
And she goes, yeah, they all want me to tell you how much they appreciate you letting them hang here. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm laughing, thinking, well, if they want to be here, I said, this is what you can do in the way that Jen and Jay and the other ones die. I said, I'm more than happy to let them stay here. I said, by all means, it's my pleasure to have them, have them be here and to uh, remain here. Now, with, uh, you had uh, quite a, a interesting experience with a, uh, a well-known television paranormal group uh, a couple of years ago. There. <laughs> I'm curious as to who you are specifically referring to, my friend. Please, my friend. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was uh, a group that, remember, that you have a, an area downstairs where there's a rock protruding. Well, there's the hill, yeah. there's the side of the hills protruding. It's not really a rock. Yeah. But yeah, there's an area yeah. that passes that to hillside. Yes, I do know the same Yeah, and, well. uh, yeah. Ghost Adventures went down there. Ah, and, uh, you're talking about Zach, uh, Dagon, and Dagon. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. He, he said that, that that room was, uh, <laughs> that the earth is basically the house is sitting on Native American ceremonial burial grounds. Which is quite honestly to the contrary, not. I repeat, not the case. As I said to him, I said, Lisa Williams came down and said there was one Native American. She felt there was hills that basically died on, basically died a traumatic death with the forest and fell down the hillside. And as a result, his remains were interred on the side of the hill. Not anything more than that. He then went and two months later in the show and literally probably less than 30 seconds later, said that David says his house is built on ceremonial Native American burial ground, which is not the case. Yes, and I've also heard that that happens in quite a few of his shows. <laughs> Has embellishment for dramatic purposes to sensationalize the scenario. No. Really? Okay. I thought all that fine. stuff was true. Wait, 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 wait. That's not to say it's not true. That's not it. It's not that it's mm -hmm. not true. He takes a strand of truth and then turns it into and creates it into a giant sand castle of his own creation of bullshit. That's no, because, that's Donald Trump. That's, <laughs> like I said, <laughs> the, the point is that the same thing was happening in the same episode where, where um, what's her name? Um, God, I forgot the girl's name. She's the girl who had the experience where she drove up to the house and she saw supposedly the apparition tape, um, bloody corpse, I mean, bloody specter of her apparition walking up the driveway, pregnant, which I told oh. them, I said, that's not true. I said, I don't believe that in fact it's day one bit, but they went with it. Um, Trey Fordham. She then said to Zach, she goes, look, a week later, I find myself at the uh, supermarket and all of a sudden, she says, I feel faint, and I feel sick. It's like, okay, well, you feel faint, you feel sick. He then says to Dr. Taft that the following day after she was up here, she had this experience. That's not what she said. She said a week later, I was at the supermarket and had this experience. That's another questionable commentary of what he embellished, what she said, and how he twisted it around to become what he wanted it to become. Yeah, but he's famous. Oh, yeah, I know. And I know. unfortunately, that's kind of like uh, a problem when you have a bad habit of twisting and turning what somebody says into what you want to create, but it's not what's being said. Well, and that's, that's just... I trouble, and I find that with the paranormal, a lot of these paranormal shows, where they're always punching, and they're always trying to get more sensational to attract viewers. As soon as you, you kind of buy into the Hollywood side of things, where, okay, we need this many numbers, or you're not going to have a show next season. You got to go out, and now you're looking, you've gone from ghost hunting to demon hunting to demons with one eye, the left-handed demons. Uh, Terry goes to hide them in a suitcase. You know, like, this stuff has to continue to get bigger and better than the next thing. Um, yeah. And honestly, you're just dealing with a bunch of spirits. They're not, they don't change. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Everyone's going to the same house. 
here's my story. I'm interested in doing a television show dealing with the paranormal and the irony is it has more to do with my life than it has to do with the ghost. Because my life's so much more interesting than just the story about the ghost and the paranormal, so to speak, and it's part of it. But the interesting thing about the paranormal is, in my case, is all the famous people and interesting different people from all walks of life that I've been able to meet and entertain and hang out with. To me, that's the, my type of my idea for the show. Because I literally have made so many contacts and friends with so many different in, individuals from all different walks of life, between the Ninth Ray and coal miners to, um, you know, uh, Nick Roth and, you know, uh, Chris Fleming and all those other people. I mean, to me, I feel kind of fortunate and lucky and blessed that um, I've had the opportunity to meet all those people. And they're not dead. They're quite yeah. alive. And that's what I find interesting and enjoyable about my situation. I think that would make it much more interesting. So, and yes, we'll talk about the channel and we'll touch upon it because obviously it's here. We're not going to run away from it, but we're not going to just like, oh, did you see that? Oh my God. It's like, yeah, when it happens, like the television turns on in front of us while we're recording, it's like, okay, so that happens. What do you mean that happens? Like, what do you mean what do you mean that happened? That just happened. No big deal. Get over it. It's not going to be a deal. You remind me of uh, a TV show back in the 60s called My Favorite Martian. Just a normal guy living oh, with something yeah. completely wonky. But he's yeah, just I mean, living I've his life. That show. That's a good <laughs> show with Ray Ralston and Bill Bixby. Yeah. Incredible Hulk. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, oh, I don't yeah. think that's a good idea. I don't think that we should be, changed, we should be meddling with human beings. That's not a good idea, Tim. That was like Mars, that Mars, that was Mars. Mars was very much like, you know, Tim, I don't really think this is a good idea. I think this could be seen as a dangerous consequence. Tim, Tim, yeah, Martin, are you listening to me, Tim? Yes, Uncle Martin. Uncle Martin, do you have any idea what the host is going to cost me? I can't deal with this, Uncle Martin. Oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Yeah, that's, that's just you and talking to your ghost friend. Yeah, I mean, basically, yeah, I mean, it's almost like the ghost of Mrs. New York, except it's, it's, you know, it's Miss Roman and all the, and a million ghosts. You know, I mean, it, it's, a, it's not even matter. It's like, like I said, it's the people that I've met that have come here to visit the house, to experience the house firsthand. It's, it's like I said, it's been such a great opportunity just to meet so many different people and just to hang out and what's the spirits like it? I mean, you know, we have famous ghosts like Dan McGavin who used to he still visits on occasion. He used to visit more when his furniture was here, but um, to me, it's like I can't explain. It. It's just a great. I just embrace it as a great opportunity because so few people have the opportunity to um, actually to experience this. Yeah. And I live it. <laughs> I can't say like I enjoy this thoroughly. To me, it's it's a wild ride. And, I just have a kick, get a kick out of it, so. Yeah, it keeps you young, too. Hey, hey, you know, question here is, uh, have you ever thought of having somebody come and try to clean it all out? Or <laughs> you're pretty comfortable knowing you can't, you can't uh, clean out something that's, uh, it was like shutting, turning, you'd have to turn off the lightning rod, which you can't do. I think you you have a better chance of getting the rain to hit Southern California than you do getting the spirits out of my house. And what I mean by that is, it's, and, I, and I, no offense to those people who claim to be demonologists or exorcists or spirit guides, as the as the Greeks used to say, famously enough, there is no returning once you cross the River Styx. The River Styx is, the metaphorically speaking, the how should say the um. Going to the other, it's basically crossing to the other side, you know, dying. Yeah. The river six is going to be coming dead and crossing over, so to speak. So I don't believe that people can tell other spirits where you can't and uh, have never been where to go. And it's just really simple and basic. So the people say, I can send the spirits. It's like, really, if you can control energy to that degree, put your God given gift to better use, like things from seven. Some, some, some good rain to Southern California because we need it out there. I mean, it's, I have no offense 
to those that want to say they can, you can talk to them. I just think it's so infrequent that we're able to really have star communication with them because they're on a point of existence on another dimension and we're on our dimension. And it's very frequent that we can have direct communication back and forth by taking up a front and, Hi, how are you doing? Well, things aren't so good over on this side of the universe really right now. <laughs> I'm having a bit of a trauma and a difficult time with it to say the goddamn way. You know, I need to use your help, by the way. It just isn't that simple. I don't care what Edison thought he could do with the gosh darn connector phone or the ghost phone that he was creating. It's just, it's a lot more difficult than that, is what I'm saying. I mean, you know, it's just, there's just some limitations, they just said, to being able to pick up the phone and communicate. It would be a wonderful thing if it existed, but it's not that, uh, that easy to say, hey, how you doing? Yeah, man, you know, I wish you were here. And you know what I'm saying? It's just, you know what I'm saying? It just becomes a little uh, problematic, kind of like that. And a little Wait. pretentious of us thinking you could do it. Well, it's because human beings want to believe that you can do it. There's nothing wrong with the belief of having that belief that you can do something. It's just hard to really make it manifest. It's hard to let go. It is the other thing I just heard. They just said it's more like it's hard to let go. People, well, we know this. You know, animals, you know, pets, parents, relatives. You know, it's, it's a tough thing to do to let go. It's hard. And, you know, um, my very first, uh, my very first click on a ghost, my second paranormal investigation, I, where I come in as a semi skeptic, I, I, he got an EVP. I said, why are you still here? And the woman said, I can't let go. Yeah. Now, when Thanks you say you just for us, when you, you just said, and a couple of times you said this during the conversation was, they just said this. Yeah. Now, are you hearing stuff right now from Yeah. Them? Okay, cool. Yeah, my, my, I'm hearing my guys chiming in saying, yeah, well, you know, this this was, oh, hey, you could have a point there with that. But yeah, you do. Do you walk around pretty well open all the time? Yeah, I, I don't believe, this is why I know people say, I gotta shut it off. I met a girl that was a waitress at my favorite restaurant, and she was telling me, she goes, you know, I was haunted by ghosts when I was a child, this and that, I couldn't turn it off. It's like, eh. I, I, I don't, I don't know, I don't see it like that. At least my experience has never been like that with spirits. I've always been like, hey, what's going on? You got something to say? Just say it, I'm here. I'll, I'll be happy to listen to you, what do you got? And I don't find it to be a hindrance or bother or, you know, it's always been something that when I was a kid, I didn't, I just started and dismissed, and then I found out, I was like, you think the son of a bitch, I'm here to give you some insight into what's going on. You're going to get a ticket if you don't listen to me, you're going to total your car, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. It's like, oh, you did to help me. Oh, I'm such an idiot. I apologize for being so, you know, you know, far-fetched to say it, but so stubborn and forget it not to hear you saying that. I'm sorry. Oh, that's not far-fetched. You are stubborn. So. <laughs> oh, I'm, I, you know, but after I get it, I get it. There's no way. Yeah. Once it got in there, it's like, okay, ah, 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 ah. I'm, I'm hurting myself by not taking advice that randomly afforded me. What a-hole I am for not paying attention. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and, and that's where I kind of, I, I look at the little kid, the little almost four-year-old that, is the lightning rod out here and, and bringing every ghost in the neighborhood home with him, uh, or they just all show up at the house. What he's going through and, and not sleeping and having to go crawl in bed with mom and dad and stuff until until he gets to the point where he can just say, "Look, you know, this is my own time. I gotta, I, I need some sleep, or I'm not gonna be able to watch cartoons tomorrow." It's uh, <laughs> we're just kind of hoping that happens. It's, it's totally freaking his mom out. He's full of high anxiety, but the kid himself is, I think, going through probably what you went through as a kid, where you you get to a point where it's like, okay, just back off. This is my time. But uh, Mama's not taking it well. She thinks, you know, these are evil things coming in, but they're not. Wow, and they're all evil. showing up to hang out with them. No, 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 no. Nothing evil about it. So, which is kind of cool for your place because uh, you know. Like, you have, you've got a really cool, uh, sport memorabilia connection. And it's for anybody out there who is a paranormal investigator that goes down to this and you touch any of that stuff, I will gladly hold you down while David puts a wooden stake through your heart. Um, 
it's like a, it's just very, very cool. The boxing stuff looks like a museum you got down there. So there's a lot of, of um, interactive material for spirits to kind of uh, hang out with and, you know, some historical stuff in there. So it, it does kind of blend well into the uh, your guest list that you have hanging out there. Yeah. There's certainly, there's definitely some connection to that under the house and the activity that we've got going on here. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is good. It, you've got good energy in there, and um, I hate to, you know, see somebody come in there and, and poke at it with a stick, um, as opposed well, we to... Know what happens. It, well, we, well, we all know what happens when somebody tries to poke at it with a stick, now don't we? Yeah. Get trash kicked in your ball, served up in your mouth, and you go home for a couple of days, and you're feeling really sick. And that's yeah. going by. Well, we know what happened to somebody we know of that was here <laughs> that tried sticking this spirit in the uh, in the eye with a ghost for the for the problematic kind of behavior pattern. It wasn't, uh, as you say, received and too well by the spirits, as you remember. And yeah. he got his just desserts, and he's still thinking about it now, calling me a fraud. But really, how am I a fraud? Oh, oh I'm, I'm possessed now. I get it. See, right in your book that I'm possessed. And what's funny is, you know, now he's on TV saying that he's possessed. Wow. Isn't that interesting? My God. Talk about a little P.T. Barnum showmanship going on there, huh? It's all about the show. It's all, it's all about, about the show. Now. It's all about the snow. In his case, yeah. um, I just, you know, find it amusing to say the police and think, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> you yeah. You're not going to go to the Queen Mary? Oh, sorry. Uh, come on. No, thank you. You know, I, I think that's just too funny. You know, you're going to do that. It's 255 dollars. Like, what the hell are you going to get for that money? I, I really, get what are you getting? A t-shirt and a hat. Per person, like, I mean, yeah. Captain Brad. We'll give you a we'll give you a hat and a T-shirt. You come on our investigation for 125 bucks for seven hours, and I guarantee you, you'll have more activity here in this house than you will ever find on the Queen Mary. And I kid you not, David. What? Have you heard about any of the other houses in the neighborhood uh, being active? No, I haven't heard anything about them. I mean, my neighbors don't know. I don't really generally speak much about things like that, honestly, so it's kind of hard to say, hey, yeah, you know, what's going on here now? So, um, no, not really. Not really at all. No. I said, yeah, don't yeah. know much about the guy at the end of the speech who has the Tate House, you know, where the Tate House did, because, you know, to him, that's, I mean, to me, that's like dangerous as territory to say the least. Yeah, that's has uh, pretty, uh, He's uh, he's his own, you know, person. He doesn't like me talking about his house. And I don't want to talk about his house. <laughs> to be frank and honest, I really don't want to speak about his house. Yeah, he, uh, I know a bit of a jerk last time we were uh, we had the interview. No comment. <laughs> okay, sorry. I can talk about it. <laughs> uh, I just rather I, not say two words on about him. Yeah. Yes, it's another country, exactly. Exactly. It's just not a good thing to talk about that. So, you know, it is what it is, what it is. So, it is, yep. you know. So, in, uh, so you want to rent this out in October, but you, you still... Yeah, well, it's September. I've got, like I said, I'm renting the house out to people that want to rent the house out for panel investigations or parties. Um, you know, personally, I think that's a great opportunity to come here for 14, 15 hours to do a, a party here or paranormal investigation. You know, it's great. It's a great opportunity. There aren't too many places that are um, as haunted as this place is, let's be honest. And have the pedigree that this place has from the TV shows it's been on. So, I mean, you know, it's an opportunity. And it's not the kind of place where you're having some poor soul that is completely lost and from a uh, psych ward wandering around crying. It's everybody who's there wants to be there. Well, even more than that, when you come here, the people that come here bring their own spirits with them. And what Barry suggested is that when people come in the house, the spirits around each and every one of us can manifest on their own much more easily because of this environment. And we've seen things that happen in our EVPs and our seances 
that we recorded have been directly connected to the people who have come into the house. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So say, say Joe Blow comes in. Well, the spirits around Joe Blow are the spirits that are going to manifest here in the house at that, at that time with Joe Blow. That's what I'm saying to you. People's spirits that are around them can come through much more easily because they're in this environment. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Well, that's, I, I, I think that is a nice place. It's, it's like a museum of, of spirit energy as opposed to uh, going to a sanatorium where it's tormented energy. Exactly. There's nothing. This is a yeah. vortex. This is a vortex versus anything else. So if anything, the spirits that are here are pleasant spirits, a nice spirit. Um, I don't say good spirits, but that's a stupid thing to say, but there's, there's no negative spirits that are here, and I could be how do you know the negative? It's like, well, because the spirits that come here, that are here, have always been positive. We've never had a problem with any of the spirits here. That's what I'm saying to people. Well, and I think it too is, is because of the land itself, you've got very, very high vibration there, and high vibration pushes the lower the lower beings, the negative spirits, are pushed back by high vibration. That's why when you burn whatever, uh, whether it's sage or Palo Santo or whatever, frankincense or myrrh, it burns at a high vibration. And it's a high vibration that pushes the low vibration out. So if you've got a high vibration structure, then low vibration can't even walk in the door. Right. Which is, which is kind of cool. I know, I know yeah. that uh, you know it's it's those lower energy entities that would love to get in there and get a boost, but uh, they can't get in the threshold. They can't get in. Yeah, they can't come in. So that's why that's why your location is, is one of the most unique locations in North America. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, there's places in Florida. There's places out in British Columbia, you know, Vancouver Island, northern uh, up in the. Uh, San Juan Islands and things because of the, the tidal movement around those small rock things. That's huge energy, and a lot of uh, as a result of that energy flow, a lot of times you'll see apparitions that usually wouldn't because they can draw on that energy to become visible. In your case, you've got one of those things things because you're you you're plugged right into the ground. You've got um, you know a high volcanic area, and you're close to moving water and tides. And uh, you've got these iron structures going into the into the quest. So, like, wow! You, you know, if you had to build a place for ghosts, this is it. Well, I, I think that we've done something very lucky for me that we've got this kind of crazy dynamic here. But yeah, I'd um, venture to say you're pretty much doing the nail on the head. Yeah, it, it is kind of cool. I, I like the idea of. Uh, opening this president up, I think that is at this time in our lives when there's a lot of people still saying that ghosts don't exist. I think this is one of those places where you say you don't think they exist. Come over to my house for a cup of coffee. Yeah, and, and bring a poop bag because I tell you, if you don't think they exist, go look at my uh, go look at uh, up, my up on my uh, mantle here and. Uh, you know, what's, what the hell is that movie? You got all the little figurines from, uh, Beetlejuice. Uh, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, yeah. Just, uh, just stand there and watch the Beetlejuice figurines for 20 minutes. And tell me that you don't believe in ghosts. Right. Okay, uh, guys. Have you pressed the button yet? No, but it's time. Okay, you press that button. I have 41 seconds to talk after you press that button. Okay. You've read my button, baby. Actually, I don't. <laughs> I don't have your extra, so you can go ahead. And, you guys can go ahead and say good night. I don't have an extra. Yeah, I'm a already, Jim. I'm a doctor, not a turntable. <laughs> <laughs> good night, everybody. Thanks for listening to Space Up Radio. It's on, Lenny.